for the 50th consecutive year. A state divides as two universities come together. The season finale for Bragg and Rights, and for so much more than that. In the state of Alabama, every childhood dream begins on the grass and dirt of the neighborhood park. The dream, a final destination that seems larger than life, yet remains identical in each one's mind. Yes, yes, yes! Yes, Auburn, yes! Alabama has beaten Auburn! And the state of Alabama is present! The progression of time. A young man's vision now more in focus, whether he's destined to wear the orange and blue or the colors of crimson and white. The path has been predetermined years ago. Those that take the final step do so at the risk of lifelong friendships, as they have become the men of Auburn, the men of Alabama. Franklin, welcome once again to Saturday Primetime here on ESPN. Look back over my shoulder. An absolute sea of RVs, over 500 of them here for tonight's football game. Now you say this game has to be for the SEC championship or at least a game of national implications. Well, that's not the case. Quite frankly, neither team is ranked. And for the first time in the history of the series, there was a total of 11 losses between the two. So if you live in the Northeast or the Northwest, you say, what is the big deal? The big deal is, folks, this is the Iron Bowl. This is the meeting between Auburn and Alabama. And in this state, it's a preoccupation, 365 days a year. So you say, well, is it that healthy to have that kind of rivalry? Well, the people here in Alabama, with all due respect, don't care about your feelings of that because to them, they know. If you lose this football game, you got to live with it for one year until they play again. Why is it so important? Well, look at it this way. If Auburn wins tonight, a tumultuous year, as we just said, only three wins. If they win, they turn a bad season into a very good season. And for Mike DuBose, not only can he improve his bowl situation, he can turn a good year into an absolutely wonderful year. So I ask you the question, as you're asking to move into the state, as you watch this game tonight, declare, are you Auburn? the 63rd meeting of the Iron Bowl, Alabama and Auburn. Adrian Carson and Mike Gottfried, when we come back after these messages. ESPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by Priority Mail from the U.S. Postal Service. By Transamerica, the people in the pyramid are working for you. And by Bold You, Vineyard Wines, Fall in Love with BB. Welcome back to Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. The Iron Bowl just about set to get underway. And we've got a lot of first in this ball game tonight. We uh, talked about some of the open just a second ago. Zhao. The opening quarterback, a freshman for Alabama, for Auburn, and Gabe Gross out of Dothan. He is just out of high school. And Mike Gottfried, I ask you this question. It's the first time that both teams have had a freshman quarterback to start in the game. Is there an advantage, or we know there's a little bit of a disadvantage for both clubs? Ron, I think both these freshman quarterbacks are going to play great in this football game. Andrew Zow's had a marvelous year for this Alabama offensive football team. But the key for Alabama to win this football game, the difference maker, Sean Alexander. He'll work against a five-man front running the football, and he'll work against a middle linebacker, Pounds, in the passing game. On the other side, Gabe Gross. He's come on here at the end of the year and given Auburn's offense a spark. His player that he has to go to is Karsten Bailey. He has six touchdown passes. Ron, he's the go-to receiver for Gabe Gross. And going back and looking at the history of this meeting between Auburn and Alabama, special teams, field goals, blocked kicks, blocked field goals, always seem to play a part. And I think tonight special teams will play a big part. Daniel Pope's an excellent punter for Alabama. He'll pin Auburn down, make him go the long way. And on the other side, Robert Baronis is a kickoff man that can kick it in the end zone and force Alabama to start from the 20. So the kicking game will be important. The 
coaches in this ball game tonight. Bill Oliver, of course, the interim head coach, the defensive coordinator, and he has always operated from upstairs and has not changed that since he has taken over the reins down on the plains. Mike DeVos, 10 and 6 in the Iron Bowl as a player and as a coach and trying to get his first win in the Iron Bowl last year. You remember they lost to the last second field goal. That game down at Auburn. Marquis Cooper and Clifton Robinson are back deep. Wisniewski to kick it off, and we are underway from Birmingham. On the goal line, Cooper. Got room. Across oh. midfield and tackled at the 45-yard line. 54 yards on the opening kickoff return. And let's check it on the sideline with Adrian Kirsten. Well, Ron, in trying to communicate the passion and the anticipation that all of these players are feeling down here right now, just considers Auburn's freshman quarterback, Gabe Gross. A year ago tonight, he's just completing his senior season down at Northview High School back in Dothan, Alabama. And now here he is tonight with the motivation from his father who played in this game back in the 70s. This is a huge opportunity, Ron. He stepped in here yesterday for the first time and said, it's almost missed it. I have a feeling that uh, those butterflies will go away quickly for him as they go with a running play. And it's Demontre Carter who takes it straight ahead for positive yardage down in the vicinity of the 40-yard line. Gross at quarterback, Embry and Carter, who you just saw. The receivers, Robinson and Karsten Bailey. Bailey has really been hot as of late. And with the offensive front, Kubelik in the middle. James out on the left side. Good matchup uh, also with Colin Sears on the other side. Check that Alabama defense in just a moment. They stop the ball just outside the 40. Keith Evans in motion, and it's Carter again. Hit at the line of scrimmage, breaks off a tackle. It takes it to the 37 as Cornelius Griffin will make the tackle. Let's check his teammates on defense for the Crimson Tide tonight. The down four, Smith, Griffin, who you just saw, Jamie Carter, and Kendall Moorhead. The linebackers, very good group, but it all starts with Travis Carroll in the 44 out of Jacksonville, Florida. And in the secondary, Fernando Bryant and Keith Bailey, or Kelf Bailey, the safeties, Tony Dixon and Marcus Bailey. Marcus Spencer, I beg your pardon. Counter Trey. Gets by the first tackle. Going to take it inside the 35 and go to around the 34-yard line, which should be enough for the first down as Marcus Spencer comes up to make the stop. Ron, they have what, what they want, the short field. Marquise Cooper gives them the big kickoff return. Now, they've got to take advantage of field position because they're an offense that's had trouble all year. Ron, DeMontre Carter starting. So Michael Burks, who hurt his ankle, in the ball game last, last week against week. Georgia, uh, is not getting the start. Demontre Carter is the tailback. Both about the same size, except Michael is a little bit larger. He's about 219 pounds. Demontre only 189. Demontre Carter had the big game last year at Georgia, where he led Auburn in the running game, and they beat Georgia. So it is an Auburn first down as the ball rests just inside the Crimson Tide 35-yard line. As you look at Burks on the sideline, everybody wants to get into this fray tonight where the Burks will be allowed to because of the ankle. We'll find out as the evening goes on. The reverse. Nope, they take the reverse and go back to the fullback Evans. And he breaks the tackle and takes it inside the 15 to the 11-yard line. Well, Ron, if you're wondering whether freshman quarterbacks are going to be nervous tonight, Gabe Gross just shows you right here by a great fake right here to the wingback, puts the ball in his hip, then hits Heath Evans out of the backfield. Linebacker on coverage, lost him. Heath Evans with a big gainer from Gabe Gross. Heath just came back last week from that injury. Had a broken bone in his foot. It happened back in the LSU game. He's only a redshirt freshman, but we talked about the emotion that he brings to this Tiger football team. They roll the pocket, flag is down, and it's just beyond the outstretched hands of Clifton Robinson. Look like some movement maybe on the uh, Auburn offense. 
play. Al Ford, the referee, we saw him last week down at Auburn. Defense, offside, five yards, receipt, first down. Extremely important, and it goes without saying, that with a freshman quarterback, it is very, very important to get off to a good start. You get off to the shaky start, and then all of a sudden the question marks start to arrive. Well, this Auburn team now has, and I've watched them through the year, they've gained confidence on their offensive side of the ball since Gabe Gross became the quarterback. First and five. To the secondary creeping up. The pitch comes back to Carter. Blocker in front at the two, at the one. Did not get in. They'll say he's out of bounds at the one-foot line as Griffin knocked him out. And Ron, when I was talking to Jimbo Fisher this week on the phone, he said when the players came in, the offensive players from Auburn, and last week looked at the tape of the Georgia game, and they saw the mistakes they made. They gained confidence because they said, if we can just do our assignments, keep our poise, we can be a good offensive football team. Jimbo Fisher sitting in the left of the picture. He is the offensive coordinator. Sitting next to his head coach. Inches. They go with Heath Evans. Over the top, touchdown, Auburn Tigers. So we could only say to the Auburn offense what they have been looking for for the offense all year long is consistency and accountability. They have hung the defense out to drive too many times. Not in this opening series and, tonight. And give credit to Mark Keith Cooper because he started it all with the kickoff return. There's a look at Evans out of West Palm Beach, Florida, scoring the first touchdown of the night for either team. With the extra point good, let's take a break. 12.06 opening quarter, 7 0 to Auburn. ESPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by MCI Five Cent Sundays. Pay the least of the day you call the most. And by the new 1999 TL Luxury Performance Pick Two. Well, we talked about the, the youth in this ball game. A redshirt freshman scores the opening touchdown of the night. And Mike, it was all set up. We talked about special teams. Big, and, and Alabama needs the same kind of return, but they're going to have a problem with Robert Baronis because he's got a great leg. 56 yards on an opening kickoff. That's what set it up. This is Richards. At the 16, and he's not going to make it to the 20-yard line. Courtney Rose, a sophomore out of Town Creek, Alabama, is downfield to make the tackle for Auburn. Offensively for the Crimson Tide tonight, Andrew Zhao, the redshirt freshman. McClintock and Sean Alexander behind him. The wide receivers, Jackson and Michael Vaughn, Terry Jones, the tight end. Up front in the trenches, Samuels, Redmill, Hogan, McDonald, and Will Cuthbert. As the Crimson Tide quickly to the line of scrimmage and a four wide receiver set. Alexander, nothing to the right. He'll take it back to the left in Haven Fields from his strong linebacking position, will make the tackle for Auburn. Here are the Tigers defensively. Leonardo Carson, he is outstanding. Watch for 95 a lot tonight. Dorsey and Dunlap making out that down three. Washington Fields, Pounds, and Ryan Taylor are the linebackers. And in the secondary, Jason Bray and Antoine Nolan are the corners. Rob Pate and Brad Ware, the safeties for Auburn. There's a good look. Number 95, Leonardo Carson. He'll be working against Chris Samuel. Boy, that's a great matchup. Stepping up is out. He is in trouble, and he's going to be tackled. Dorsey will get him, and he did get back to the line of scrimmage. In fact, he may have picked up a couple. Andrew Zao, as I said in the open round, has had an outstanding year. Always under control with the football. When you look at his statistics, he's thrown 127 of 233 passes. Here he just gets... Uh, stopped by Charles Dorsey. Ten touchdowns, but only six interceptions. So he doesn't make a lot of mistakes with the football. Bill Oliver 
is known for giving young quarterbacks a lot of looks early and a different look on every play if possible. Here they come with the blitz right up the middle. They pick it up. Alexander stays at home. Azal rolls the pocket. Gonna run it. And the 25 will step out of bounds and in got hit out of bounds. And two flags have been thrown. Boy, that is a bad mistake. He may have had the first down anyway, but add 15 yards on. Yeah, Marcus Washington hit him late and out of bounds. And uh, you're right, Ron. He had the first down, I believe, and tacked this one on. But Andrew Zow with, again, a good move. Smart play. There's no place to throw the football. He's, he's a very good athlete. He runs for the first down and then takes the hit here late. Way late. And what happens is... They started out inside their own 20, which is poor field position, and limit you what you're going to do offensively. Now, all of a sudden, you shift the, the balance as far as the field and good field position at the 41. With and, the penalty. and you made a point about Bill Oliver, and when I talked to Andrew Zell on the practice field the other day, he said the Alabama coaches have prepared him. They said Bill Oliver will try to rattle you early in the first quarter with blitzes. Well, you can tell that there is miscommunication, that the noise, and this is supposedly the home field of Alabama, or they should have the partisan house, but uh, Zhao and company did not get the check off at the line of scrimmage. Five yards, still first down. Seven to nothing. If you just joined us, just over ten minutes to play. Opening quarter as Auburn took the football and went right down the field, very impressively. Washington, nothing at left guard, and he slides it to the outside, or Alexander, I should say, and he is hit by Courtney Rose. Larry Beal, let's check with you. Hey, Ron, Clemson in South Carolina. Javis Austin takes the pitch, touchdown, 14-7 Tigers in Tommy West's final game as the Clemson head coach. Hard to tell about emotion in a game like that. Four wide receivers again for Alabama. Second down at about 15 for the first down. They throw back into the boundary. Very high throw, but caught by Millens. And he will take it back to the original line of scrimmage as Haven Fields is there to make the tackle. Ron, I'm impressed by Millen's athletic ability. Not only did he go up and make the catch, but when he came down, he made a couple moves to get by a, a tackler. And coming out of the secondary, I believe it was Rob Pate, and, and made a bad play into a good play. Well, again, a freshman. A lot of these kids are going to see. A lot for, of youth. Yep, we're going to see for... A lot of years to come as both clubs having to go with a great deal of youth. It is third down, and the line to make is the 49 of Auburn. Zhao sets in the pocket, goes long and well overthrown. Vaughn is the man that he wanted, and actually Vaughn was open, and that ball flew on him. See now if Daniel Pope can do what he needs to do for this Alabama football team. He needs to pin this Auburn offense inside the 10-yard line. The leader in the Southeastern Conference will be kicking it away to Clifton Robinson. Tigers had the return on. This is a thing of beauty. All the way back, caught it at the three-yard line. Good heaven. And it's going to be hard tied at the 10. Why, why, why? That's what the coaching staff is going to ask. That ball would not only gone in the end zone, out of the end zone in the stadium. Well, anyway, it's the emotion of the night. 8.35 left. Auburn on top. 7-0 Auburn leads midway of this opening quarter. And Mike, how about where this punt was caught? Well, Daniel Pope does the job right here, Clifton Robinson, but he makes the catch here, Ron, but here's the rule. You put your heels on the 10-yard line, anything over your head, you fake the fair catch and run away from it. But you do not want to catch the football inside the 10-yard line. So as a result of the mistake, and again, special teams, Auburn takes over at their own 10. Quick pass. 
He's got to complete to Bailey. That'll be good for a gain of five yards. And Fernando Bryant, who told us on the practice field on Thursday that every time they're in man coverage, that he will be with Karsten Bailey. He has to be on Karsten Bailey. He grew up a Tennessee fan. Uh, he's had two interceptions this year. An outstanding cornerback, highly rated uh, a cornerback in college football. Second and five, here's the pitch to Carter. Turns the corner. That is a nice job by a big fella. Jamie Carter, who weighs 314, you can see got way outside to make the tackle on Carter as he had to slow down a step. This is big now for Alabama's defense here. You want to win the field position battle for the freshman quarterbacks to put him in a position uh, to, to play with a short field and good field position. Now here's where Alabama's defense needs to stop. Gabe Gross needs to keep this drive alive. Carter five carries for 17 yards. 32% on third down conversions this year. They roll the pocket, barely gets it away. And he's got a man there and it's caught. That's Robinson. Miles, the freshman, got turned around, should have either intercepted or knocked down the pass, and the play goes for 48. Well, Clifton Robinson adjusted to the football. Reggie Miles did not. Gabe Gross, first of all, is going to sprint to the left. It's a dash play. Moving to the left, and he throws off balance, but watch Clifton Robinson adjust to the football. Mike. Makes that catch. Miles thought for the world he was going to make the interception, and Clifton cut right inside of him. Well, he had the interception, but he didn't play the football. From the Auburn, or Alabama, 35 and a half yard line. Goes to Cuff, and he's going to be sacked. Moorhead. Loss of 10. And if Alabama needed a big defensive play in the early going, it was right there. Yeah, Gabe Gross is going to get hit by Kendall Moorhead. A missed block by the tight end. They kept the tight end the block on that side. Reed Tankersley just didn't do the job. You know, Gross had a sore shoulder. He got banged up last week against Georgia. He didn't practice on Tuesday because he was so sore from that Georgia defense. They pull the guard for uh, the block for Carter, and there's nothing doing. Nice job this time by Trevor Smith. And right now, the Alabama defense has Auburn going in reverse. Trevor Smith made that tackle. He came into the ball game with 72 tackles, leading uh, the, the Alabama football team. He was the starting fullback in 96, so goes to show you what kind of athlete he, he is. He can play on one side, and then two years later, he's the starting linebacker and a leading tackler on this defense. Wide to the top of your screen, number five, Kirsten Bailey, and number 17, Marquise Cooper. Bailey, of course, you would think would be the go-to guy here. Gross slips as he plants his foot. He goes to Bailey, has it complete down at the 32, and that's going to be about six yards shy of the first down. Fernando Bryant makes the tackle. Well, a good tackle by Fernando Bryant, a good break on the ball, but Karsten Bailey really did a nice job of coming back to this football. You see him work up the football field, make his route. Now he comes back to the football and makes the catch of the Gabe Gross pass. will attempt a field goal of 49 yards from the far hash mark. This would equal his longest. That's a good pass. He's got the distance, and he's good! And right now, with 4.58 left to play in the opening quarter, the Auburn Tigers are shocking the favored Crimson Tide of Alabama. Let's take a timeout. Auburn 10, the Tide nothing. On the sideline, the defensive unit for the Alabama Crimson Tide talking with their coaches. The special teams, Mike, 
It's been the difference in the football game. Well, Daniel Pope did his job. He pinned Auburn inside the 10-yard line, but they left a big pass play to Clifton Robinson, got him out of the hole. Robert Baronis with a nice long field goal, 49 yards, puts his ball club up. So both kickers that we thought would be a big factor are early in the ball game. 10 to nothing, Auburn. yards deep and they will not return it. Millens thought about it for a second and then uh, his counterpart back there with him, uh, Richard, said no. Well, coming up next Saturday at ESPN, we'll be looking deep for Tennessee wide receiver Curtis Price, T. Martin's go-to guy. Game day at 11 Eastern with another pair of state rivalry games. Mike Agent and I will be at that game between Virginia and Virginia Tech at noon. And at 3.30 over on ESPN2, it's the second-ranked Volunteers of Tennessee taking on Vanderbilt. Then later on the deuce, Michigan looks to rebound against Hawaii at 9.30 Eastern. Counterplay. Alexander, and he has not been able to get right now. Oliver is to stop Sean Alexander. Now that's the number one threat that he wants to shut down. So he's put the extra flair for Auburn in the box to stop the running game. So Andrew Zao's got to take advantage of that. He's got some things in the passing game. They just got to hit him and loosen up the Auburn defense a little bit to, to kind of free up Sean Alexander a little bit. Football, second and ten, and there's a mix-up. Somebody went the wrong way. I think it was Zhao, and now he's really going the wrong way as Courtney Rose comes in to make the tackle on him. And here we go back to that thing that you talked about in the opening series. Now, what Bill Oliver likes to do to confuse young quarterbacks. Yeah, but I think this was just a bust, Ron. He's spinning around here like a top, and that's just somebody went the wrong way you the fullback to the tailback and then andrew zow just took the loss but uh, again that, that was just a foul up by alabama i'd have to say with the fullback with the lead going left and sean going right that it was the tailback sean alexander who uh confused it from the shotgun alexander nice tackle at the 14 by jason gray and boy the Auburn tigers simply could not play any better than they have so far and ron you, you have a third and 18. trying to settle down your offense you're just trying to not make any big mistakes and hope daniel punt daniel pope can punt it out again and and pin auburn back a little bit well, this first part of the night 56 yards this time, he's standing at his own end zone line. Not as far. This spiral is not going to turn over. Fair catch is signal for and made at the 45 by Clifton Robinson. Yard shorter. And this is the game plan that you want if you're Auburn and Bill Oliver and Jimbo Fisher who's calling the offensive plays. They've had a short field now in a couple, a couple situations, so Gabe Gross has to continue to take advantage of it. Keep putting points on the board because eventually Alabama's going to hit some of these passes and get back. And goes for about three yards, maybe four, close to the 49-yard line. Cornelius Griffin defensively for Alabama. Well, Michael Burks hurt his ankle in the Georgia game last week, and Jimbo Fisher, who's up in the press box, didn't really realize how bad the ankle was hurt. He said, I should have got it early. You don't really know how badly a player's hurt on the sideline. Quick pass in the flat, got it to Bailey, and he's going to be bumped out of bounds by number 25, Fernando Bryant. But Auburn again with a very efficient application of offense. And Gabe Gross uh, is just amazing me the way he's come out here in this ball game. Uh, Adrian Carson talked about last year, his last high school game, he played in front of 9,000 people. And now he's in the biggest game of his life. 116 to 9. Trey Carter tries to bang it up hard, and he goes inside the 35. 
Travis Smith is there to make the tackle on him. Ron, when I talked to Gabe Gross on the field, he said, how you play in this game is how... And I guess that sums it up the best because... Talking about it in the open, that it means so much when you play your interstate rival. So Gabe Gross is off to a big start. He learned a lot also from his father. He was an all-conference performer at center at Auburn. Quick pass. Got it to Baylor. Tries to do a turnaround back onto the field of play. You can see Bryant trying to knock the ball out of his hands. And let's check it on the sideline with Adrian Karsten. Ron, I want to take you back. Series for Auburn where Gabe Gross was... A little bit of a, a nerve problem down there. Was having trouble getting a grip on the ball late in that last series. Seems to be coming back around to it. Remember, he did injure that last week. Third down and three. Moronis is kicking the football. But, Ron, I'll tell you, you let an Alabama football team, they're explosive on offense. They can get back in this ball game when you get threes, when you want sevens. 44-yard attempt. He already has one from 49. For the first time tonight, for all intent and purposes, Alabama stops them. They, they've stopped them because they don't get any points. Bronus hit it well, but just hits the upright. And now again, Alabama and Zao have to start. The ball hooked, Mike. It started off right down the middle and just continued to hook. Zao, ball blocked at the line of scrimmage and number 86, Clinton Reese, the junior out of right here in Birmingham, got up and knocked the pass down. The tale of two quarterbacks because Gabe Gross has gained a lot of confidence early in this football game, but Andrew Zao, up to this point, his offense has not been able to get going. Michael Vaughn, Quincy Jackson, those are the receivers. He's got to get the ball in those hands. Second down and 10. He just joined us, Auburn, 10 to nothing. Could be the last play of the opening quarter. As Zao goes down, he is sacked by Haven Deal. Alabama's goes to a no-back set. What does Auburn do? They blitz them. They just blitz them with one more man than the offensive line of Alabama could handle, and they sacked Andrews out. And with that, the end of the first quarter. And the folks wearing the blue and the orange are standing, and they are cheering for good reason. First quarter score, Auburn 10, Alabama nothing. We'll be right back. Mike, on this day, all roads lead to Legion Field in Birmingham. As this, the 63rd meeting between Auburn and Alabama, the Iron Bowl. Ten to nothing, the Tigers conquered with ease the opening quarter. And look at that, zero yards, Alabama, first 15 minutes. Zao, going to go long. Quincy Jackson was the intended receiver. And as you could see, double coverage on him in the secondary. Yeah, Brad Ware ran step for step with Quincy Jackson. And again, Alabama not able to muster anything against this Auburn defense. So it means that Daniel Pope will come on and try to do his job again as Clifton Robinson goes back deep for Auburn. has a return on good coverage spiral this time spiral is turning over all the way back to the 30 yard line as robinson breaks a couple of tackles and he's loose again robinson all the way down to the 33 yard line and we talked about special teams off the top and again it is proving to be correct as daniel pope the punter makes the tackle 50 yards on the kick 
42 on the return. Clifton Robinson, a former high school running back, gained over 5,400 yards in Naples, Florida as a running back, shows you the moves. And again, he puts Gabe Gross in a good short field situation. Well, it kind of erases that error he made back in the first quarter of catching the ball at the three-yard line. This is Demontre Carter. Alabama strings him out, but he turns the corner, and then, wow, does he pay for it. That's Marcus Spencer, the sophomore out of York, Alabama, who comes over to knock him out of bounds very hard. Ron, a nice block by Geno James, number 78, the junior uh, tackle on the left side for Auburn. But this has been a key so far. Demontre Carter, Auburn has had trouble running the football. But DeMontre Carter gets to the corner, takes a lick, but they're running the football well here in the first half. Keith Evans back in at fullback for the Auburn Tigers. I think the chain gang had failed to move, and that's the reason for the whistle and the stoppage in play, because it was a first down. And the officials stop it for just a second, and uh, now they advance it. Ron, this is where Auburn's got to punch it in the end zone, right here. You know, Alabama's trying to keep them out and force them to a field goal attempt again. Gabe Gross has to get his ball club in the end zone here. Carter, right up the middle, has five, seven, and now eight yards as he will take it to the 14, and Tony Dixon on the stop. And right now, you also have to credit that offensive front of Auburn. Well, Kent Rick Trickett, the offensive line coach, has his five interior linemen, uh, offensive linemen, for the first time the last week against Georgia and this week against Alabama. And you can see they're doing a much better job in the running game. Second down and short. They say his knee touched at the 15. So it's second down at about three. Here's Carter again. He's stutter step. He's loose inside the 10. First and goal. Auburn from the six of Alabama. And I'm telling you, the Crimson Tide faithful are sitting here stunned at Legion Field. They can't believe that this Auburn offense that has had so many problems this year right now is just manhandling. Well, you can see the offensive line. They get the double team and a good block by DeMarcus Curry inside. DeMontre Carter's running hard, Ron. First and goal, it's Carter. He gets met at the line of scrimmage. That's a nice job by Marcus Spencer. As the free safety came up, no regard for the pass that time, and he was there in a hurry. Ron, Marcus Spencer sitting in a safety position about eight yards deep, and as soon as he sees the run, he's just going to read it and come up and make the tackle because there's no one that can block him. DeMontre Carter never got a chance to get started there. Big play by Spencer. That is a loss of about two and a half yards. Short drop. Fade, corner of the end zone. Bailey, touchdown. Oh, what a catch. One hand. by Gabe Gross. A great catch by Carson Bailey against Fernando Bryant. It's hard to say against a guy like Bryant who doesn't give much away. Bailey, five catches for 49 yards and now the touchdown. As Baronis with the extra point, he is good. And it is 17 to nothing. The underdogs from down on the plains right now having their own way with Alabama will take a break. Karsten Bailey with one hand, and it is touchdown Auburn. ESPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by Dr. Pepper Company and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. And by Saturn, a different kind of company, a different kind of car. Beyond that sea of RVs, the city of Birmingham, as the lights come on in downtown Birmingham, you can bet those that are not here at the stadium are either in front of a television or listening to a radio because not many folks miss this encounter each year, being a football fan or not. This is that standard line of the three hours that the state stands still each year. Right now, the Alabama folks are a little bit more still. Well, the offense is standing still. 
This one's not going to make the end zone. From the four-yard line, it's Bryant. Fernando. 35 and out to the 40-yard line. Now let's see if that good field position sparks the Alabama offense. It was Richard, I beg your pardon, number 26. Well, the college basketball preview edition of ESPN Magazine is on the newsstands now. Look for Duke's Elton Brand on the cover, plus plenty of college football coverage. A look inside the Bowl Championship Series and a whole lot more. All of the current ESPN Magazine. So Arvin Richards with a nice return to the 40-yard line. And here's Sean Alexander. Breaks the tackle, and this may be his longest gain of the night. It's a pickup of about four as Jason Bray tackles him. Just get a feeling, though, that Alabama just about ready to get untracked. I know you're looking at me like a little puzzled there, but I... Auburn defensively, they, they, they've won this first quarter and they've done a nice job on their offense, really has played well. But Andrew Zao, once he settles down, there's some things that he can pick out here throwing the football. Alexander weaves his way in and he's close to the 50-yard line. That's Rob Pate who trips him up. Adrian Karsten. And some of the heaviest hitting on the field right now going on between two opposing linemen. Leonardo Carson, the great defensive tackle for Auburn, and Chris Samuels, the offensive lineman for Alabama. Best of friends, former teammates at Shaw High School back in Mobile. Ron, when they talk about this game being the uncivil war, this is the kind of one-on-one -on -one matchup they're talking about. Both of these guys, I think, are going to have an effect on the outcome of this game. Carson, 70 tackles in the last seven games. Ron. Well, they are two outstanding performers, both of them. As Alexander falls forward, and it looks as though he will have the first down. Well, on that last play, when Adrian was talking about Chris Samuels, you talk about coming off the ball. You want an offensive lineman to come off low and fast, and that's the way Chris Samuels comes off the line and blocking Leonardo Carson, but that'll be a battle we'll watch all evening. So it is a first down for the Crimson Tide. As you see him blocking against his former teammate, and Alexander goes up the middle. The biggest thing right here is that the Alabama defense gets a little bit of a, a rest, which they have not had much of tonight. That ball through the hands of two prospective receivers, Jackson and also Vaughn. Passing game uh, for Alabama just hasn't been there in the first quarter and uh, start of the second quarter here. One of four for three yeah, yards. Just, uh, uh, that's saying enough right there. And that's what they've lived on this year. They've lived on throwing the football. 17 to nothing, Auburn. We have 10.50 left to play, opening hand. Marvin Brown is checked in at fullback for the Crimson Tide. Reverse to Locke. Blocker in front. That's Cuthbert. And he is going to be knocked out at the 45 as Jason Bray comes over to make the tackle. It should have had more on that play. That play developed, and they had blockers out there. But Jason Bray and Rob Pate made the play on Eric Locke. You, you like your secondary making plays. Now everybody's moving to the right. Now your secondary comes back. A couple missed opportunities on blocks. And Jason Bray makes the tackle. So you set those plays up, Ron. You, there's a certain point in the field you want to run them. And, and it's, if it's blocked right, it's, it's a great play. And they just missed blocks on that play. Third down at six, and Zal wants a timeout. It is the first timeout used by either club, so we'll take it with him. 10.05 to play, opening half. Bo Jackson uh, gained 142 yards and scored two touchdowns against Alabama in his final performance here at Legion Field, but the Tide won the game at Van Tippen's last second field goal. By the way, defensively tonight, Haven Field, seven tackles, four solo, one tackle for a loss and a sack. Tremendous first half for him, number 54. From the shotgun, Zao dumps it off and has it complete at the 40. Michael Vaughn makes the catch. Well, Larry Casher with a nice tackle, Rhonda. It's, it's going to be close whether he got the first down or not, but Larry Casher with a good stop on Michael Vaughn. 
Michael Vaughn's just going to run a drag route over the middle. You see Larry Kasher close the gap and make the tackle and hold on. It didn't stop the first down. Probably the most important thing about this drive right here is not only points for Alabama, but the longer Andrew Zal stays on the field, you know, possibly the more comfort he will get as far as the surroundings and, uh, you know, with his teammates and what they're looking at. And they're trying to help him with play calls because they're running the football a little bit more now. Alexander tripped up. That's Ryan Taylor who got just a piece of him. He was about to break that open for a gain of about five or six yards. And, Ron, when you look at the SEC freshman starting quarterbacks, and we've talked about Quincy Carter having a great year, 12 touchdowns, nine interceptions. Look at Andrew Zow. He's thrown 10 touchdown passes, six interceptions, a high completion record, uh, 178 yards per game. Gabe Gross, who's come on, he gets better each week. So uh, three outstanding quarterbacks in the SEC. Two of six for nine yards for Zow on the evening. With a play action, Zal Dunn's got a man wide open at the 22-yard line. That's Eric Locke. Tackled by Brad Ware, but it's the longest gainer by air, 17. And, and he didn't really throw that ball that well. He kind of floated it up to Eric Locke. But you can see now, all of a sudden, Andrew Zao starting to come around a little bit. And, there, and again, I give Neil Calloway credit here, who's calling the plays. The offensive coordinator trying to roll him out now, get him in a comfort zone, let him start making some plays and feel uh, get feeling in this ball game. Ninth play of the drive for Alabama. They trail 17 to nothing. Trying to get back in it. Straight ahead. First man through Montoya Madden. Big opening inside the 15, and he's down close to the 12. Marcus Washington on the bottom of the stack. When you run an eye attack, and all of a sudden the quarterback wheels out of there and you think it's going to be a pitch or a toss sweep to Sean Alexander and then you hit Montoya Madden, the fullback, in a little belly play. It hits so quick the linebackers don't see it. Second down and short. They'll run it. Alexander, nothing to the right, cuts back to the left, tries to bounce it outside and he does at the five and touchdown Alabama. special teams who will make the tackle. Ron, here's what's going to happen on the touchdown. Dustin McClintock's going to come this way, Sean Alexander this way. You're going to see the block on number 54, Haven Fields by McClintock. Split flow action makes it look like Alexander's going to go to the right side. Picks Sean, or, uh, Samuels is out there also, but just a great job of cutback running by Sean Alexander. The Montre Carter, and he is loose in the secondary. Travis Smith saved a huge gainer, but that is 15 yards. And, you know, Carter has been a difference, that little darting action. And, you know, sometimes you say one combination is better against an opponent than another. Well, he was slow early in the year with an ankle sprain, and then we had the Virginia game, and I remember an 
and I, I told you about this. They did an interview with him after the ball game. He was so hurt by losing the football game, he said, if I can't win the game, let some other tailback get in there. 13 for 57 for him is gross. The ball is tipped. He wanted to throw it to Evans, and it's Kendall Moorhead who got his hands up and knocked it down. That's the first miss by Gross tonight. He's 7 of 8. And the other thing, if you're Alabama, what you want to do, you want to turn up the pressure on Gabe Gross a little bit. A little closer ball game and make him continue to make plays. Now, Andrew Zal feels good about his last series and last drive, and now you put a little pressure on Gabe Gross. Second and ten, boy, Evans hit at the line of scrimmage and I mean he did not really have a chance to get the football before Travis Smith and Kenny Smith combined on the tackle you could hear that cage rattler all the way up here oh, I mean it was at the line of scrimmage there was no place for Heath Evans to go they again Auburn trying to sneak their fullback through Heath Evans got a chance to be a great fullback in this SEC he does everything well now it's third down and Auburn will work with Gross under center. Alabama showing blitz. Gross under pressure, caught from behind, and he's going to be tackled. That's Jamie Carter, who came across to drag him down. Now Alabama, Ron, with their, their offense clicking a little bit. Now their defense playing a little bit. Uh, we've got ourselves a football game. by Fernando Bryan on Karsten Bailey. Really, it's no place for Gabe Gross to go with the football. Harvey Richards is back deep, ready to receive the punt of uh, Jeremy Zills. Not a good kick. End over end. Caught on the run at the 22-yard line, and Alabama will have the ball just across their own 25 by Richards. Well, some great college basketball next week on ESPN on Wednesday. It's the Chase preseason NIT semifinals from Madison Square Garden. Game one, St. John's takes on number two Stanford at 6 o'clock, followed by North Carolina and Purdue in the second game. Then at 10.30, the championship game of the Maui Invitational. Utah, Clemson, Syracuse, and Indiana headline the field out in Maui. I-44 until halftime. Zao from the shotgun and shovel pass, and it was caught actually by an offensive lineman after touched by an Alabama running back. Red Mill caught the ball, and that's where the ball should be dead. As the officials confer, he was on his knees, and because he was touched by two other players, uh, he is not ineligible, is he? That's not an illegal touch. Sean Alexander was the... Uh original player that was going to receive the shovel pass see Alexander come across he telegraphed that my yeah, that's a lot of penetration though well 36 Kenny, Kenny Kelly, Kelly got a hand on it he He's... almost had a chance to catch the uh, shovel pass so a loss of about a half yard now lobs it Alexander Trying to break away from the tackle to pick up the first down. He'll be a yard and a half short. Sean Alexander, they're going to work him against the linebackers, Ron. They, they, he's such a good pass receiver out of the backfield. He's had 23 receptions coming into the ball game. He's got good hands, catches the football well, and that's a nice matchup for Alabama's offense against Auburn defense to put him against the linebacker, Haven Fields. Third down and short. Alexander looks for a spot to run. Samuel's out in front of him, and he not only has the first down, much more. Alexander shoved out of bounds by Larry Kasher, and let's see, he stepped out of bounds back up at the 40-yard line. It's a 26-yard game. Yeah, he's a difference maker. He should have been tackled in the backfield by Leonardo Carson. He had a shot at Sean Alexander. But shows you what a great athlete he is. He just avoids the hit right here by Leonardo Carson and gets outside. There's another missed tackle, and now he gets the corner. 
and he's off down the sideline. But again, he made a great individual effort on that play. Line of scrimmage is the Auburn 40. Clock is stopped with 4:01 until intermission. They give it to Montoya Madden, the first man through. He'll go for a couple. Adrian, let's check with you again. Ron, uh, the Alabama Crimson Tide did something they haven't done prior uh, this year in any one of the weeks of their uh, season. They went two days with no pads at all, just shorts, jerseys, and helmets. Theory being that because they had no bye week, and there was a time when they did have a week off before they played Auburn, a lot of the guys were bumped and bruised, and uh, especially Sean Alexander really thinks it's paid off for him. He actually uh, came in with a full tank is the way he put it to me. <laughs> Richard in the ball game. They pitch to him. He wants to throw it, and he does. Deep, looking for Jackson. Touchdown, Alabama. throwing to the senior Quincy Jackson and Ron what made that play Arvin Richard made it look like a run all halfback passes you want to make them think it's going to be a run he strung it out waited to the last second through that touchdown pass Flugner tries to cut it to a field goal lead and he does Three minutes, 15 seconds left until halftime, and all of a sudden, the Alabama Crimson Tide has awakened. 17-14, Auburn. If you love the complete relief of NyQuil to get you through your nights, you'll love its non-drowsy daytime version called DayQuil to get you through your days. Vicks DayQuil, the non-drowsy, stuffy hit sore throat coughing fever so you can get through your day medicine. How to speak Australian. Witness Protection Program. Beer. Foster's. Australian for beer. At Zales, the diamond store, you can now find platinum, one of the rarest, most precious metals on earth. From platinum wedding bands like this half carat for just $16.99 to exquisite platinum diamond engagement rings like this one, only $19.99. For this platinum and 18 karat gold marquee band, only $39.99. Forever starts today with a diamond from Zales. It is more than a trial by fire. It is a rite of passage. And if you can master your fear, outsmart your enemy, and never yield even to yourself, you will be changed forever. The few, the proud, the Marines. Well, they're a little bit excited here at Legion Field, as you can imagine. Three-point game, Auburn 17-14. It's a game of inches, Ron. Watch the fullback here, Dustin McClintock, because he makes this block, gives, gives Arvin Richard time to throw this football. And then a, just a great job of positioning his body, Quincy, Car Quincy Jackson against Jason Bray. By the way, for those of you who are trivia buffs, another first in this ball game. Arvin Richard had not thrown a pass prior to that here at Alabama. So, and as Mike said, he... He sold the play as a running play, and then the good block by McClintock, and they were able to execute it perfectly. This is a pooch kick. Going to hit untouched at the 15, just now picking it up, and Auburn will have the ball at the 14-yard line. Larry Beal, let's check with you. All right, Ron, the Buick Halftime Report is coming up. Lee and Kirk will join me, and you'll see we're big on alliteration. We've got bull births, hapless hogs from Arkansas, plus your complete rivalry review. That's coming up at the half. See you then. Our situation, 17 to 14 with 3.04 to play. Now, what Auburn has to be very cognizant of is you look at a gigantic second quarter by Alabama is don't take anything for granted because all of a sudden you get this football up and you could go in trading it half. Well, Alabama has two timeouts left, so they need to stand right here. 
Here comes Demontre Carter. Carter, nice job as he took it back to the outside, turned the corner, and it's going to be a gain of close to six as Travis Smith bounces him out of bounds, but they really haven't stopped Demontre Carter all night. No, Heath Evans with another nice block. We've got some fullbacks in this ball game that are blocking number 44 with a block. And then a nice move on Fernando Bryant by Demontre Carter. He froze him and then took him outside for extra yards. So rather than playing second and long, they play second and short. Carter again. They stretch it out. Flag is down, and Reggie Miles bumps him out of bounds, but let's take a listen to what Al Ford has to say here. It's going to be a hold run, and it's going to really put Auburn in a hole. again with Larry Beal. Larry? All right, Ron. Clemson in South Carolina. And this is Howard Bartley. Stepping up and making a play. Oh, hang on to it. 47-yard interception return for a touchdown. And it's 21-7 Clemson over on the deuce. Following the step off of the holding call, this is Carter. Now he is hit by Travis Carroll. And all of a sudden, the tough thing also for Auburn is not only is the offense and the defense together in harmony for Alabama, now all of a sudden this huge crowd is in harmony with what's going on in the field, and that makes it much more difficult. Yeah, Auburn, or Alabama should get the ball back here against Auburn. If they stop him here, and as I said previous, uh, they've got two timeouts left and a lot of time on the clock to make something happen. I'm no surprised they didn't call a timeout there. But well, I think they want to save their two timeouts here. They may make a timeout call after this play. Gross rolls the pocket. Zings it, and that is overthrown. Kendall Moorhead was the man who was really applying pressure. And they don't have to use a timeout now. They, they, they kill the clock with that pass incompletion. So Alabama should have great field position. Only the second punt by Zills, and he's going to need to get off a longer one than he did the first time. Otherwise, the Crimson Tide is going to have an excellent field position. Tigers lead it 17 to 14. They own the first quarter. Alabama has owned the second quarter. Nice, nice punt. Richard all the way back to the 35-yard line. And he will get out of bounds after he got as much as he could at around the 45. It's a 52-yard kick and seven on the return before Marcus Washington made the tackle. Well, this week's primetime NFL lineup begins with ESPN Sunday Night Football. The surprising New Orleans Saints taking on Jerry Rice and the San Francisco 49ers at 8.15 Eastern. At ABC's Monday Night Football, Dan Marino with the first-place Dolphins meet AFC rival the New England Patriots. ESPN and ABC exclusive homes of primetime NFL football. Zao has a minute 42 seconds to work with and they have the football at the 45. As Alexander tries to turn the corner that's a great job defensively by Auburn. Rob Payton number 31 was there to not allow him to get into the open. And a timeout has been called by Alabama to stop the clock with 1.31 to play until halftime. So let's take the break with him. 17-14 the Tigers lead. In a world of constant change, a solid foundation is the key to success. The 12 institutions comprising the Southeastern Conference form pillars of academic and athletic excellence. For more than six decades, the SEC's commitment to teamwork and achievement has provided the foundation for student-athletes to become the leaders of the next millennium. The Southeastern Conference, a proven past, a promising future.
Welcome back to Legion Field at Birmingham, Alabama. 1.31 left until halftime. And Auburn leads it. But Alabama right now appears to have seized the momentum. What they would dearly love to do is score again before they hit it at halftime. They were down by 17. Zhao pumps once. Goes right over the middle. Wide open is Hall. And Calvin Hall works for the sideline. Did he get out of bounds? Well, he got to, he's got close to the first down marker. He's got the first down, so that stops the clock. Whether he got out of bounds or not, I'm not sure. But Calvin Hall with a good, smart move to try to get to the sideline. Now Ford just whistled it back into play. And he did get out of bounds. They yeah, that's, out of that bounds. was the play clock that started, not the game clock. You're right, Mike. Zip this pass. That's Jackson. Full ahead of steam over the middle. Jackson at the 10, down at the 5, and his first and goal, Alabama. Ron, Andrew Zhao has now settled down. And he's he's in the ball game now. The nerves, the, the, the being rattled early in the ball game, you can forget that now. He's throwing and doing a nice job getting the ball to Quincy Jackson a little clear by the inside receiver. Quincy Jackson comes inside. Jason Bray finally makes the tackle on him. But Andrew Zhao hummed that football. Clock is running. 59 seconds left until halftime. First and goal, five and a half yards away. Full back to the one-yard line is Madden. As they tried to cross it up, and they did, as Madden came very close to sticking it in the end zone as Ware made the tackle. And, Ron, they've got a lot of time. You know, you don't want to use the time out here. You want to try to take Alexander over the top right here. And if he doesn't make it, then you use your timeout. Mike DuBose looking on anxiously. Clock runs at 24, now at 23. It's Terry Jones, the tight end, resetting it. Madden again over the top. Didn't make it. Now you got to use your timeout. And they stop it with 12 seconds. In this situation now, Ron, you're going to get a chance to run off play, but it's got to be a play almost where you fake the ball unless you have so much confidence in your running game that you're going to try to run the football and score the touchdown because you're only going to get one play if you run the football. But the play you like here is to take Sean Alexander over the top, faking the ball, and get Andrew Zhao in the corner where he can run or throw it. And if he can't get in the end zone, throw the ball away. So you got your field goal set up. So Alabama uses its final timeout. 12 seconds left until halftime. Auburn leads 17 to 14 as the Tigers had led it 17 to nothing. And Alabama has come storming back. That is the man you would expect to get the football. Well, if you, you're only going to get one play if you give it to him, so you better get in the end zone. I think, you know, again, this is a nice play to roll out and try to throw the football. Zhao on the sprint out. For the end zone, it is intercepted by Haven Field. And he had a wide open receiver in the end zone. Calvin Hall was so wide open at the back of the end zone, he just threw it off, threw it across his body for the interception. But Calvin Hall, I promise you, was standing wide open, and that's what Andrew Zhao was able to see, but he threw it across his body. Now, the reason this play's good, you, the, the last thing you want to do is throw the interception. But there, there's Calvin Hall sitting in the back of the end zone. Marcus Washington was applying all kinds of pressure. Auburn now just needs to run five seconds off the clock and head into halftime, having seized some of that momentum back. And Gross will go on one knee. So it is halftime here at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. As his teammates try to comfort him on the far sideline, Zal throwing an interception, and John David Phillips, who started it the year as the starting quarterback for Alabama, is the man who's talking to him. Halftime, it's Auburn 17, Alabama 14. Now with the Buick Halftime Report, let's rejoin Larry Beal. Larry? 
17 to 14 our scores we get ready to open the third quarter off the top of the telecast we talked tonight about how the two teams would try to deflect the pressure of the two freshman quarterbacks and for the most part they did a good job and it took Alabama a little bit longer than it did Auburn they really did but Karsten Bailey bailed out uh, his young quarterback Gabe Gross and Sean Alexander while Andrew Zow was getting started he made some big plays here's Karsten Bailey quick out against Fernando Bryant then the touchdown pass the fade against Fernando Bryant with a run one-handed catch on Alexander a big play where he ran around the left end to take a little pressure off and get good field position for the Bama offense then the touchdown run where he dipped inside got outside he got in the end zone Zal, the numbers for him, 7 of 12, 83 yards, one interception to gross 7 of 9, 120, a touchdown, and no interceptions. And for Alexander, the numbers on him in the first half, 11 carries and a total of 57 yards. So Baronis has it teed up. You remember Alabama won the toss, and they deferred to the second half. And Arbert and Richards, one of the deep men, along with Freddie Millens back at the three-yard line, and you can see that uh, Richards is standing there turning around to the partisan crowd back behind him saying, hey, make some noise here. Well, he's already fired up. He threw the touchdown pass, and uh, he plays with a lot of excitement. We're almost to kick it off. Again, he puts it in the end zone, and they tell Richards, nope, let's don't return that thing. Let's take it at the 20-yard line. Well, the first half staff stats run almost dead even when you, when you look at them. The turnover by Alabama and uh, the return yards big for, for Alabama also. But uh, Zao's interception being the turnover just before half. Well, that was the buzz up here at halftime. Everybody talking about what they would have called or was it a good call was it a bad call Ronnie was the right call because you should have got two plays it was should have been a rollout if the receivers not there throw it away kick the field goal it was the right call just a bad result Alexander nothing to the left and you can see that Haven Fields one of the first men to come across along with Brad Ware to stop him just going back to that last play here's the play Andrew Zao now if you choose to run the ball and you don't make it you get one play on this play you roll out if it's not there throw the ball away but he threw it to Haven Fields for the interception you throw the ball away Mike DeBose had the right call then you kick the field goal when you go in tied can't question the call Second and nine, quick screen. This is Quincy Jackson. It's a good job by Ryan Taylor, who reaches out and shows some great arm strength in just pulling him down. Adrian Karsten, what do you have for us? Well, Ron, the look of confidence on the face of Andrew Zow as he came out after the half was altogether different than it was at the end of the first quarter. A lot of that has to do with the amount of time that he now has compared to the first quarter when he gets to the line of scrimmage. Throughout the first 15 minutes, he'd come up with seven, eight seconds left on the clock. Now he's getting to the line of scrimmage with about 10, 12 seconds. Coach DeBose reminded him, be patient, Andrew. You've got a lot of athletes helping you out. Don't try and do everything by yourself. Looking sharp tonight, Adrian. I like that tie. <laughs> Got the pass complete up at the 28-yard line. And that is not going to be enough for the first down because of the touchback. You know, they took it at the 20, so it's going to be three and out for Alabama to open this third quarter. Yeah, not far enough for Michael Vaughn to get the first down. Shortened up his route two yards. Hope to punt, and he is kicking into a little bit of a wind here. Clifton Robinson, who was effective in that first half on punt returns, is the deep man for Auburn. And he's dropped off very, very deep. Not a good kick, though. Came across it, and it's going to go out of bounds at the 36-yard line. So not a long kick, but no return. No return on the point. But coming up next Saturday on ESPN, the leading rusher in the ACC, Thomas Jones of Virginia, averaging almost six yards a carry this season. College game day at 11 Eastern, followed by the battle for bragging rights in the state of Virginia. Mike Adrian and I will be on hand as the 18th-ranked Cavaliers take on the 20th-ranked Virginia Tech Hokies at noon Eastern time.
play action by Gross. Looking, got him open. That is Robinson, and the tackle is made as Alabama has a player down at the 47-yard line, good for 20 yards. Reggie Miles, Ron, he was uh, the defensive back that was uh, competing against Clifton Robinson. He went down, looked like his knee buckled on him. Karsten Bailey cleared out the route. Then Clifton Robinson came back up inside, and Miles went down. Going to see the play right here. It's a clear out right here. This will be Clifton Robinson, and Miles will follow him. And then he just goes down. When he grabbed at that hamstring, it appeared, Mike. I hope it's a hamstring yeah. rather than yes. a knee, but he grabbed at it as he was hitting the ground. That means Hunter, number 39, will come in replacing Reggie Miles at that cornerback spot. Gross stepping up, ball blocked at the line of scrimmage. And it looks like Tony Dixon is the man who got up and got his hands on it. Defensive back, number 24, Tony Dixon, a sophomore. Was reading the eyes of Gabe Gross. Gabe Gross kept skating up toward the line of scrimmage, trying to find a throwing lane. We talked about Gabe Gross last week, Ron. He was real effective against Georgia when he rolled out. To be 1140 yards for Gross on the night. Running play, Carter tries to bounce it outside and he will be dropped for a loss. Tony Dixon, one of the first men there, number 24, the sophomore out of Reform, Alabama. It's Tony Dixon on the play where he comes up. The play was really made by the defensive linemen because they absorbed all the blockers. Tito Smith made a nice play, and then Tony Dixon also in on the tackle. Third down, line to make, is the 34 of Alabama. Gross, and he just flipped the ball out to Carter. finally falls down at the 25. How much of an ad lib was that? You talk about a smart play. Now, Gabe Gross just made a big and a very intelligent play. First of all, it looked like he was trying to go to his key receiver, Carson Bailey, but he was blanketed by Fernando Bryant. And then he flips that ball out to Demontre Carter for the first down. <laughs> and Carter was so busy moving quickly that he finally lost his own footing. Gross was fortunate he didn't get a forward lateral called on that play. Very close. 22 yards, and it's first down at the 25. Here's Carter. Waits for his blockers. Number 44, Travis Carroll, came from that middle linebacking spot. To make a tackle on him, it's a gain of about a half yard. Alabama does a nice job here stretching this play out. On a toss sweep, the more you can make them run to the sideline and string it out till you get some help, the better off the play is going to be. DeMontre Carter couldn't find a hole. Happy to report Reggie Miles back in the lineup. There's Reggie, freshman out of Pascadoula, Mississippi. See the blitz coming. Gross gets it away. Nice job defensively as Steve Stanley, the left side linebacker, knocks the ball away from Tankersley. But just punches it out with his right hand. And I'm watching again that uh, Karsten Bailey working against Fernando Bryant on the outside. Anytime they go in man coverage, Fernando draws Karsten Bailey. He wants to try to make sure. Here he is stopping him up in the... Uh, Play. Now that, that play was Reggie Miles yeah, on was, him. That was Reggie there. Now here comes Fernando Bryant's going to go on Karsten Bailey. Right here. On the shotgun, there is movement. No whistles, and Gross gets by the first tackler. Now they're going to whistle the dead. Look to Zoya. Yeah. Auburn might have come out of a stance early on the offensive line.
before the ball was snapped. Movement by the offensive line, five yards. Still third down. Larry Beal, let's check with you. All right, Ron, they call it Civil War. Oregon, Oregon State, Akili Smith, play action. He'll keep it himself and dash three yards to the end zone. 21-17 now. The Ducks have taken the lead in the fourth quarter. Ducks and the Beavers battling for supremacy up there in the, the state of Oregon. Right down here in the state of Alabama. Auburn leading 17-14, to and they are threatening again. Third down. They need to take it to the 15 to keep this drive going. Gross is going to be tackled at the 29. That's Cornelius Griffin. Well, Cornelius Griffin out of Pearl River Junior College didn't play last year. And Ron originally signed out, signed out of high school with Auburn. So uh, changed and made a big play on Gabe Gross. Boy, could this be right? What a quick quarter. I can't think it was five seconds. Is that? That clock is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I started to say, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> Our clock that we show up in the corner of your screen is the one that's correct. 10-17. <laughs> they're now telling the officials what you just noticed. And they're huddling at the 30 to discuss. Now, here's the difference. Like, we do ACC games. Their clock operator is up in the press box. The SEC, the clock operator, is on the sideline. Al Ford is going to come over and uh, make a quick phone call. And I guess we'll talk to the official scorekeeper. They will check back on what is the official play-by-play -play and see when, what time the last play started. Or what time, the, how I'm, long that play? I'm going with our guys. I think it's 10-17. I'm with our guys. They don't make mistakes down there in the truck. Yeah, but we just rolled off a second and it hasn't been whistled <laughs> in. Well, they put it back. Yeah, we... I trust our guys, too. Yeah. That's, you know, it's 10-17. Yeah, you know, just put it up You there. know where your producer yeah. is. <laughs> in the truck. Okay. There it is, right there. Look at there. They just they did it right there. Good. Okay. Good, good. Now, these guys uh, do a nice job, and they were all over it, wanting to make sure that nobody makes a mistake and that everybody gets the allotted amount of time. But I have to admit, I did a double take that hurt my <laughs> neck when I looked up here and thought five seconds left. Mm. Moronis. Will attempt a field goal of 46 yards. Good pass. Plenty of distance. He is no good. He didn't hit that one well. Uh, no, I did. I don't. Fernando Bryant with a lot of pressure. So there's a timeout on the field as you watch the kick coming toward the crossbar and... ESPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by AXA and the Equitable. Start building your financial future today. And by Chrysler, engineered to be great cars. We are back at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. 9.52 left to play, third quarter. Well, they're standing at every corner of the stadium to see this one tonight. So they got the clock squared away. It is a first down with the line of scrimmage to 29. Faked it to Alexander, throws to a wide open Michael Vaughn over the middle. And that time they decoyed with Alexander. Yeah, you're exactly right. Sean Alexander makes this play because of the fake from Andrew Zhao. And then the, he worked on the linebackers. Watch the fake here, first of all, on the draw. Now he comes through and he's trying to take Haven Fields, number 54, out of the play, opens up the middle for Michael Vaughn. Good throw by Andrew Zhao. You see, Vaughn slipped down, and then he stayed on the field.
Haven Fields working against. He knows he has Sean Alexander out of the backfield. But that little design of the play opened up Michael Vaughn over the middle. Adrian Carson, what do you, uh, what can you tell us about this? Rod, something rather significant concerning and talking about injuries. I have not seen Tavarius Pounds, linebacker for Auburn, in the game. Reminder, he injured that shoulder, slight dislocation last week. Significant because he's an outstanding coverage linebacker. And if you look at the kind of success Andrew has had here in the second half, that's where Pounds would have been. That's a good point. Here comes Alexander. Blockers in front as a flag comes down, but everywhere he goes, he is shadowed by a lot of white jerseys. Ron, while we had a second here, I want to wish Craig Hayward, uh, the running back that we had at Pittsburgh, uh, he's wish him well on a speedy recovery in Indianapolis in the hospital. I read what he used out of intensive care at yeah. the end of the no week. Flag. Doing better. That was like proper alignment for the offense. No flag of the play. I, I guess the flag was thrown initially thinking it was no, not having seven men right. on the line of scrimmage, but then as they reviewed it, they did have seven on the line of scrimmage. That's the reason for the picking up of the flag. as they come back to the line of scrimmage. A second down and 10. They're going to have to hurry. They do get the play off. Zal throws it back on the screen, and oh, he led McClintock too much. And that thing was pretty well designed because there were a lot more red jerseys than there were white jerseys and Chris, on the sideline. And Chris Samuel was going to lead this play, and the guard, number 75, Griff Redmill, really nice design play. Here it's set up. Now you got two blockers. You got Samuel and Redmill out here if he catches the football. Just let him a little bit too much. Chris Samuels has been an impressive offensive lineman in this ball game. Yeah, he has. Taylor was out there in the vicinity, a little closer than I thought. Four of nine on third down conversion for Alabama. They need to take it to the 43 to keep this drive going. And Zal is not going anywhere as he is sacked for the second time tonight back inside the 35 by Carson. What nice play by Leonardo Carson who was a former high school quarterback but when you look at Andrew Zal's day pressure here in the first half a missed play a miscue the interception just before half by Haven Fields then John David Phillips, the former starting quarterback, consoling him. And uh, Andrew Zow said he's like my second coach. So the Crimson Tide has to kick it away. Good driving spiral. Robinson to the 25-yard line. And not much on the return. Good coverage on the special teams. 40 yards on the kick and two on the return. Let's take a break. Auburn continues to lead. Harmon continues to lead by three. We say uh, uh, happy retirement to Ned Wilford. After 25 years, he's going to hang him up. He and his twin brother, Dan, both played the uh, collegiate football at Ole Miss. Went to school with Ned. He's going to say so long after 25 years in the Southeastern Conference. Wish him well. That's a long time to be chasing these young fellows around. He gets a head start, though. He's way back. That's right. He's the one with the B on the back, the back judge. Carter, nice job of accepting the pitch back. Has five, has ten. Counted off at about 11 yards as Dixon makes the tackle. Carter has been a difference maker to me in this ball game. Well, he's running well, and I told that story earlier about him. He's a total team player. Gabe Gross really does a nice job taking it to Kendall Moorhead at the last second, pitching it out to Demontre Carter, and then he just runs downhill but Ron I I think that says something about that young man he said after the ball game let somebody else play if I can't get the job done most players and a lot of players sometimes uh, point fingers at other people this time he takes it right up the middle you can see he's not a big fella Marcus Spencer comes up and hits him pretty doggone hard and Carter that's going to put him close to 100 yards on the night and this is an Auburn offense you remember during the year had a hard time run. running the football 
Now all of a sudden they found their running game. The offensive line, I think a lot of the reason is the offensive line's healthy. They've had the same five interior linemen in there for a couple weeks in a row. They've also had the same center for more than a couple That's weeks. right. They were down to like they had a lot of injuries early for, in the year. Yeah. Dumps it out in the flat and that one is a little bit too far in front of him. Moorhead was up there trying to make him throw over the tall bridge. Made it difficult. And Kendall Moorhead coming from the outside in the 6-3 and his hands and arms extended. Makes Gig Gross uh, just throws him off a little bit on the throw to Demontre Carter. 6.43 left, third quarter. Auburn, 17-14. They scored the first 17 points. Three of the first four possessions. And since then, they have not been able to put it into the end zone. They missed two field goal attempts. 46 and 45 yards. Drills it. Intercepted. That's Spencer. Gross is the only man who can get in, and he will. like he got hurt on that tackle. Looks like he hurt that shoulder again. He sure does. Adrian mentioned that he missed the first part of the There's Marcus Spencer sitting right in the middle of the field. And Gabe Gross is the only Auburn player had a shot at him. Back to live action. Alexander loses the football. And Auburn has recovered at the five. who has had an outstanding Oh, he knocked it loose. He's played great, and that's the sudden change again. When your defense goes on the football field, you look for them to make plays. Sean Alexander with the football. There's the hit by 54, 54 Haven Fields. And Gabe, and Gabe Gross is going right back in the ball game right now. Remember, he took a shot on his shoulder on that tackle. But we saw him last week. The coaches one time called down, said he was coming out of the ball game, and he tossed the phones down, and he went right back in the ball game. A competitor. He's going to throw on first down and has it complete to Karsten Bailey. It's Kelf Bailey who will make the tackle on him. And from the looks on his face, that shoulder is not 100%. Yeah. But he's not coming out. He knows he's in this battle for the long term. Boy, what a gigantic play by Haven Fields to knock the ball loose on what a field goal by Alabama. Probably a touchdown uh, with the first down and goal at the five. And it erases Marcus Spencer's interception. Option. is going to keep it, and he will be close to the 15. Larry Beal, let's check with you again. All right, Ron, they call it civil war for a reason. Ken Simonton with a touchdown run. Tying this game at 24. Oregon and Oregon State heading down to the wire. Just over four minutes left to play. Our situation, a three-point ball game. Just over five minutes to play in the third quarter. John Alexander doesn't turn it over very often, but... Just dropped it in a critical spot. Straight ahead, Heath Evans. And there's your first down by Auburn. They will keep this drive going. Adrian Karsten, what do you have for us? One of the only reasons Heath Evans is able to play tonight and last week as well, Ron, is because he had an orthotic built, custom built for his foot because he had uh, a broken bone in that foot and ankle earlier this season. They put a plate in there took a mole of his foot, Ron, and with some space-age technology, what is usually called a moulage, what they did is to, to make this uh, custom-built orthotic for him, provide stability, let him cut left and right. He's doing a great job out there tonight because of that insert in the shoe. <laughs> okay, Aiden. And he's getting a little scientific on us down there. Carter. Knock 
knocked down after a gain of a couple of yards and it's 99 it's Gilbert freshman linebacker defense did a good job of stopping the play from going outside and forcing it back in when you look at both these teams around a lot of young players on oh. both these teams Auburn uh, brings back almost all their ball players Alabama very young uh, should be much much improved football teams next year Cornelius Griffin you saw limping off the field number 97 here comes the blitz gonna have to hurry and he just threw it away there's the flag and this is going to cost him the down yeah. and a step off half the distance to the goal from where he committed that it's going to be long way to pick up the first down. Ron, you look at all the blocking schemes in the offensive line in different formations, and you try to figure out a blitz where you can free someone. Well, Alabama did it on this play. Travis Smith, number 48, was freed from the snap of the ball because of the way the design of the blocking by the Auburn offensive line. Gabe Gross never had a chance on this play. Intentional grounding against the offense. So five yards puts it back at the three. Demontre Carter is supposed to step over here and block on Travis Smith, but he's just too late. Are you going to see it again? Demontre Carter has him the whole way. He just doesn't make the block. Third down at about 22. Here's Carter. Takes it off the left side for four, maybe five. Travis Smith again. Again, a safe call by Auburn and Jimbo Fisher. Just giving the punter a little bit of room. Alabama may go after this punt. We haven't had much pressure into the punter tonight. Well, Zills has only had to punt three times. See his longest, 52. Nope, they got a return. Good kick, too. Good coverage kick. All the way back to the 39-yard line is Richards. And that is a great job on the special team. He's going to spin around and wind up picking up about six yards. But it's 52 yards in the kick and seven on the return. Let's take a break. Auburn by three. Gabe Gross on the sideline, and he's uh, been talking with uh, Embry and a couple of running backs and also uh, Ben Laird, who at the beginning of the year was the starting quarterback, and they're discussing either blocking scheme, picking up the blitz or something like that. They were very animated in their gesture. I think both quarterbacks, Ben Laird and John David Phillips of Alabama, lost their job, but they're both into this team concept trying to help the other quarterbacks. I think you're right. On first down, here's the draw play. Alexander, they continue to try to spring him, and a nice job by Courtney Rose to get outside and hit him, and he just has not been able to get free tonight for much of anything. Number 95, Leonardo Carson, wasn't blocked at the line of scrimmage and forced Sean Alexander to scoot it out to the left side. Longest game from scrimmage tonight by Alexander is 13 yards, and quite frankly, I didn't remember that he had that. But that was but a he, touchdown. That's right. That was the touchdown run. Second and ten. Zal rolls the pocket, throws wide open receiver. And he hit him falling down. It's Eric Locke. yards in the pass play. Neil Calloway again, the offensive coordinator sprinting out Andrew Zal, bringing him to the two-receiver route. There's Neil, the good call, Eric Locke, Locke with the reception, the former roommate of Mike DeBose in college. And has been in both places, as you can see. First in time. Crimson Tide with 2.34 left of the third quarter. Flag is down. Alexander. Boy, he's been a marked man. Quentin Reese is at the bottom of that pile. I was just thinking about uh, Neil Calloway and Bill Oliver, the only two that's been at Auburn and Alabama. They should have kept Holmes at both places and then when they moved, they just go back to that house. Shift on the offense. Wouldn't have lost there any money selling houses. A full second before the last man went in motion. 
You really think that's a good idea, huh? <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Uh, a look at the two coaches who have coached on both sidelines. They're dueling against each other right now with their staffs and their uh, respective teams. You look all week at tape trying to find tendencies of what somebody does in certain situations and then try to call the best play you can call. Zhao delivers it, has it complete, and that's Bowen's. Bowen's got hit a pretty good lick, and one of the reasons is his young quarterback kind of stared him down. Yeah, you don't want to lead your receiver into Sean Shaw, the linebacker, and let him uh, behead him over the middle. Tim Bowens will go back and uh, tell Andrew, uh, I'd like to have that one, but outside a little bit more. <laughs> See the, uh, the numbers for Bill Oliver in the iron goal as a player, as an Alabama assistant coach, and as an Auburn assistant coach. Second down. This running play, Ryan Taylor is right there to hit Sean Alexander. And there is just not much happening. Larry Beal, let's check with you again. Hey, Ron, we showed you Oregon State tying it up. Oregon, as the Ducks try to finish up 9-2, and two, march down the field, late fourth quarter. Akili Smith, third touchdown pass of the game. Tony Hartley goes up and reels it in. It's now 31-30 as Oregon State has just scored. Great athletic move by Hartley right there. Looked like he was pretty well covered. Run all the rivalry games today. Coaching, you must win the rivalry game. Man. That's the most important ball game you've got all year. He takes it to Alexander. Then throw back over the middle. Alexander makes the catch. And he's loose in the secondary. At the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Dustin McClintock, the fullback, number 30, crosses also, so you get a little crossing route against those linebackers underneath. Now Auburn's got to answer the Alabama score. Marquise Cooper for the one. Cooper's going to take it all the way out across the 30-yard line. The 
this week's primetime NFL lineup begins with ESPN Sunday Night Football. The surprising New Orleans Saints taking on Jerry Rice and the San Francisco 49ers at 8.15 Eastern. At ABC's Monday Night Football, Dan Marino with the first place Miami Dolphins take on AFC rival New England Patriots. ESPN and ABC exclusive homes of primetime NFL football. Mike Gottfried and Adrian Carston coming to you from Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. 12 seconds left, third quarter. Crimson Tide finally on top in this ball game as Gross is going to be hit and knocked down. Moorhead is the first man to get to it. Ron, any time they show option, they go right to the tailback and forcing the quarterback Gabe Gross to carry the football. That, my friend, is the end of the third quarter, so there's a timeout. Alabama, 21. 17. Well, look at this, Mike. In the last three Iron Bowls, Auburn led 23-17 at the end of a three and 96. They lost. 1997, Alabama led it 17 to 12. They lost. So going into the fourth and final quarter, Alabama leaves 21-17. So I don't know what that means. That's bad tidings for them. Wanted to throw the screen to Montre Carter. Boy, he'd have been better off to drop that, and he did. Well, they're pressuring Gabe Gross now. Steve Stanley. Stanley from his linebacker position. Gabe Gross again. Not a not time to really do anything here. You're going to see number four come into the picture. And the backside of Gabe Gross really doesn't give him much time to set up to try to get the ball to DeMontre Carter on a swing pass. Listen to these defensive numbers. Spencer, nine tackles, one interception. Trevor Smith, seven tackles, one tackle for a loss, and Griffin with seven tackles. Fields with eight, an interception and a sack for Auburn. Rose runs up into the pocket, has five, has ten, and almost loses his head as he is tackled at the 43 by Dixon. You talk about toughness on a quarterback. Now, this is a freshman quarterback that last year about this time was playing in a high school game with 9,000 people. He goes back, sets up the throw, knows the only way he's going to get this first down is to carry the football and get the tough yardage. You, you can believe that this Auburn football team has rallied behind this Gabe Gross because they know he's a warrior. A lot of good times to come with this young man at the helm. They roll him in the pocket. Now going to go deep. And just overthrown. Devontae Carter is who he wanted. And Fernando Bryant is there with him. And Moorhead again putting pressure on him. Yeah, they keep pressing him. And uh, that was a slow developing play. Gabe Gross. Going to roll to the right. Kendall Moorhead with the pressure. And Travis Carroll finally makes the hit. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but uh, Demontre Carter went down after he tried to catch that pass and stayed down, and the trainers had to go get him. They're going to put Rusty Williams at the tailback position, so that, that tells me Michael Burks just can't go. This is Williams. Nothing for him. Jamie Carter, the first man to get there and hit him. Also, Wagner. Wagner hanging on. This is a ball club Auburn, though, that's had a lot of injuries throughout the year. This is not the same defense. They've lost some linebackers. Uh, that they've gotten hurt. Uh, their, their offensive line, you talked about the center position. Their tight ends have been hurt all year. Monte Carter's trying to come back to the ball game. This is a team that's had a lot of injuries. Jimmy Brumball. Not only Jimmy a good Brumball, player, but another, a leader on yeah. that defensive team. That's why I say, when they come back next year, this is going to be a ball club that's going to have to be reckoned with this Auburn Tiger football team. That was Haven Fields who was being attended to on the sideline. Gross got it away. It's picked off. Merrick stepped right in front. And that's where you get you in so much trouble. Yeah, you try to make a play. Kenny Smith really with good pressure on Gabe Gross. And they've been pressuring him this whole second half. They've been getting the game gross and just tried to make a play, just tried too hard here through the interception. Kenny Smith 
number 88 really gets in the face of Gabe Gross. Instead of taking the sack, he's trying to make a play. And here he throws the interception at the Miguel Merritt. Miguel Jr. out of Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Alexander takes it for one tough yard, 86. Quentin Reese and Leonardo Carson combining on the tackle. Mike DeBose says about his tailback, Sean Alexander, that he is an excellent cutback runner with great vision. In that play, you saw his cutback ability. There was nothing front side, really wasn't anything backside, but he cut on a dime trying to get backside and make the play. So it's got to be a second down and 10 as the head coach paces. He's got a four-point lead, but he knows he can put a big step forward toward winning with a touchdown here. Sal has it complete the Hall, and Calvin Hall is going to be tackled just around the 20-yard line by Bray, but that's enough for the Alabama first down. Boy, just a nice design play. Three wide receivers out to the wide side of the football field. And as the play breaks, you have a clear, a clear, and then a curl inside and Calvin Hall it opens up perfect for him on the curl from the 20 Alexander takes it to the outside and he's going to have five yards in the play they'll say his knee touched down at the 16 as Marcus Washington tackled here it will come for came over to help his running back up and get him back to the huddle it's been a rugged evening on number 37, Sean Alexander. He does have a 13-yard touchdown run, but he's taken a lot of punishment as well. Ron, the importance of this ball game, you hear it for 365 days. The other games, now they're important, and, and they are important because they count as, many, as much as this game does. But you hear about this game in state for 365 days. McClintock in motion. He's the lead blocker, but look at the job defensively as they string it out. And Alexander comes back the other way and is tackled for a loss by Jason Bray. Well, Andrew Zow tried to help him. He threw a nice block, but Jason Bray, too much speed, made the tackle on Sean Alexander. A lot of times those plays will work, but most of the time, 9 out of 10, you're going to lose yardage when you try to reverse field. So the clock runs about to go into 11 minutes to play. It is Alabama 21 and Auburn 17. The Tigers scored the first 17 points. Then Alabama has come back with 21 unanswered. Zhao looking for the end zone. Gets cleared. Swings it out to Alexander. And breaks one tackle. He's going to wind up with a gain of about six yards in the play. Larry Kasher will make the stop on him. Yeah, Rob Page slowed him down. He just missed the tackle, but he did a nice job of making Sean Alexander freeze a little bit and not able to get some speed up. This is important right here for Auburn to keep it within seven. Flugner to attempt the field goal, and from where he is standing, it's either going to be a 31 or a 32-yard attempt from the far hash mark. Daniel Pope, the punter, is the holder. Flugner tries to make it a seven-point game, and it looks as though the play clock has run down. Well, you don't want that if you're Alabama. It makes it a little more difficult. But I thought it was no, just uh, more yeah, than they, deliberate. They, they, were, just... they were taking their <laughs> sweet old time. Mike DeBose is over there. Hey, guys, <laughs> we've got the opportunity. Now let's see if they come up with points off the turnover. Now you can crowd the football a little more if you're Auburn on defense. Try to get to this, block this kick. He's got it. 36 yards. 9.54 left of the ball game. Alabama makes a turnover into a field goal. It's a seven-point Crimson Tide lead.
ESPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by the Grand Am with solid form design. It's excitement well built from Pontiac. And by MCI Five Cent Sundays. Pay the least on the day you call the most. So we're back here at Legion Field, 9.54 to play in our ball game. And it's Alabama 24 and Auburn 17. Neski to kick it off for the Crimson Tide. Clifton Robinson, number 15, is the deep man for Auburn. Let us give it come down to Marquis Cooper. One of the rare times that they have held him short of the 20-yard line. Chris Edwards. On the special teams will make the tackle at the 19 yard line. On this half, Carson Bailey's been quiet. You go back again, you look at the return yard heavy in uh, Auburn's favor, but Carson Bailey and the, the little move of Fernando Bryan, he shadowed Carson Bailey most of the second half. Six catches, 55 yards for him. Here he comes again with him. Mississippi State right. in the ball game last week and at practice yesterday defensive pass interference 15 yards on that first down well, you know what we had practice on Thursday a couple of the players referred to him as flag and he <laughs> said hey come on now get off my back <laughs> wait breaks on the ball well no he, he did it's good call Karsten Bailey you just figure that that as you go, as you're a freshman quarterback, you're going to try to find your senior wide receiver who's caught six touchdown passes. The other, the entire offensive uh, receivers and running backs only caught four more. So Fernando Bryant, the rest of this ball game, you're going to see this matchup. Kendall Mack in the ball game at tight end. Remember, he's the big tackle that they put 85 on as this ball is lofted way too far for Karsten Bailey. And again, the Fernando Bryant with the cover. Larry Beal. Hey, Ron, we got a good one. In the rain, Oregon, Oregon State first overtime. Ken Simonton takes it outside for the touchdown. Beavers leading 38-31, Oregon on offense as we speak. Hard to know who you'd figure in that kind of weather, Beavers or Ducks? Yeah, I'm kind of, I kind of favor the Ducks a little bit more. We'll see, Mike. It's weather for Ducks, you know that term? Well, beavers live in water, too. <laughs> 24-17, Alabama leads this one for just under 10 minutes. Gross sets, drills it, and incomplete. And I'll tell you what, he threw such a strike. I'm not sure Robinson was ready for that kind of heat. Well, Clifton Robinson's wide open, and the reason he's wide open, because Carson Bailey clears it out. And then he comes underneath. You're going to see again, Carson Bailey's going to clear it out. And he's going to come right underneath, wide open again. And it's heavy cushion. He just doesn't bring in the football. Throw a little bit behind him, and he's going to make that catch. Mm -hmm. And he's had a, a big ball game tonight. Yeah, he really has. Third down and 10. They need to take it to the 44-yard line to keep it going. Pressure on Gross. Gets by one. And delivers a pass, and I'll tell you that with his drop by Embry. Meanwhile, Gross took a shot as Wagner was applying all kind of pressure, as was Jamie Carter. Two missed opportunities because you had two balls go right through the hands of wide receivers and a fullback, Kelly Ember. Looks like Reggie Miles is down. He went down in the first half with an injury. But Gabe Gross, you talk about a great effort to get that ball off the last play under tremendous pressure by Clint Wagoner and Jamie Carter. <laughs> and 
Here's the hit on Reggie Miles, just a collision with Telly Embry. The run, didn't you say early in the ball game, uh, was uh, Gabe Gross off to like six out of six or seven out of seven? Seven out of seven. The first one he missed was his and eighth. He, so he was, you said seven out of seven? Seven out of seven. Okay, yeah. and you, when you look at his statistics now, Here we go. 9 of 22, so it's uh, a, a good defensive effort by Alabama. A lot of drop balls, too. Yeah. You know, as they continue to check Reggie Miles down in the field, I know trainer Bill McDonald is uh, calling it quits after this season. Been around this Alabama program for a long time. It is not that he's leaving, but he's going to oversee all trainers for all athletics at the University of Alabama. And a nice man, too. It's just enjoyable visiting with him when uh, when you travel to the Alabama campus. There he is right there. Bill McDonald, who he said, is uh, not leaving this program. He's going to oversee all trainers for all sports at uh, at Alabama. But 27 years, long time to uh, to serve in a capacity of athletic trainer. Seen a lot of ankles. <laughs> for sure. Glad to see that Miles is up and off the field under his own power as Jeremy Zilds will kick it away. Now the clock begins to become the enemy of Auburn. 9-11 left to play. Bearcats to signal for and made by Richards. So we'll take a break. 9-02 left in the ball game. Alabama by seven. 9-02 left to play in the ball game. 24-17. Legion Field in Birmingham and uh, packed to capacity as usual. Up that nobody wants to miss, and it really doesn't matter what the records are when they come into this one. Tonight's ball game, more losses than the two teams have ever come in with in the history of the rivalry. As they go with the fullback, and that's Montoya Madden, who will take it for short yardage. Larry Beal, let's check in with you again. Ron, wild scene, Oregon and Oregon State in overtime. This is a fourth down play for Akili Smith. They need to convert incomplete game over but wait a second late flag comes in the fans rush the field they think the game is over it's not over pass interference first down ducks we're still playing wow take, take those handshakes back game's not over yet I'd like to see the reaction that uh, oh. of the coaching staff when they found out there was a flag down Well played here. Freddie Millens makes the reception, and as Mike said, it's a nice job defensively to get out there quickly and uh, make the tackles. Larry Casher. What you hope is that Chris Samuels can get out there and block Larry Casher, but Larry Casher did too good a job of getting underneath where Chris Samuels couldn't pick him off. needs a big play defensively here. They need to help their offense out a little bit. Vaughn, the man in motion. Saw the blitz coming and the pass is well overthrown. It was a collision. Nah, just good coverage. Good coverage, incidental contact. Vaughn is the man who went uh, spinning down in the field, but no harm. 80,000 80, officials here running interference with Larry Casher just really blanketed Michael Vaughn. I think as this wind has shifted, that uh, Pope's going to get a little help on this kick right here. He doesn't need much. No, he doesn't. If he can get up a good high one as he did back in the first half, he can shoot it a long way, and he does. This spiral turns over way, way back to the 18 ball is fumbled, and... Alabama football. Catch. 40 
37 yards in the punt, and we had just mentioned it was very high. And as that spiral came over, special teams tonight, Ron, have been such a big factor. We talked about it in the open. And you, you'd like to have a Daniel Pope on your football team. Zao. That's the worst looking play I've seen this year. Well, that, that was a that, broken play. Yeah, that was the spin around again. The, the, the top play, spinning like a top. And Daniel Pope, he's got a leg. What Pope is doing, he's running down. He's the holder on field goals and extra points, and he's going down to, to help his kicker. Second down, Alexander back into the boundary. He will score. Chris Samuels with the paving block. Ron, when you have to have it, you go behind your best offensive lineman. And that's number 60, the junior, 6'6", 285 pounds, Chris Samuels. Paul Hogan with a good block. Chris Redmill, Jason McDonald, Will Cuthbert. the holder. Hildner trying to make this a 31 to 17 ball game. And he does. Flag at the line of scrimmage. The point is good. So with 641 left in our ball game, the, the new score is Alabama 31, Auburn 17. Well, those folks wearing crimson are a little bit excited right now, and why not? And in case you just joined us, Auburn led 17 to nothing. Alabama has now come back with 31 unanswered points. As I watched and look at the Auburn football team, what they've been through this year, uh, they've, they've been through so much. And you just feel for them. Marquis Cooper on one knee. You have to. The kids are terribly resilient, but they have just been bombarded. They've had that, that cloud of controversy over them. And they have weathered, tried to weather the storm, but you know that they're going to be, in a way, Glad that this season is over and ready to get a new start. First Terry Bowden and uh, Rodney Allison, then the controversy over who would be the head coach. And when we talked to several of the players the other day, they talked about shock, and uh, now they're just numb to the to what's happened this year. First three drives, seven of seven, 120 yards since then. Two of 15, 26 yards for Gabe Gross. Gets this pass complete. Clifton Robinson came back and caught the short ball, and let's check in with Larry Beal. All right, Ron, Oregon, Oregon State. The Beavers thought they had the game won. They cleared all the fans off the field. Achilles Smith backpedaling. Jed Weaver, touchdown, tied at 38, on to double overtime. Well, let's see if that affects them in the second overtime because that, that could be a little bit of a blow to you. I don't think there's any <laughs> doubt about it. Good yeah. 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 Getting ready to tear the goalpost down, and they say stop. Laying out for the ball is Clifton Robinson, but it'll go in incomplete, and that stops the clock at 6.21 to play. the tight end, the intended receiver. No, that's about the five five or six passes that's been uh, catchable that they just couldn't hold on tonight. Now, that 
Reed Tankersley uh, was defended there very well, but still should have caught the football. And the pressure from Alabama's front four continues against uh, freshman Gabe Gross. Rolls to his right, throws it back into the middle. It's going to be incomplete. That's a good hit on Devontre Carter by Miguel Merritt, who had the interception just a few moments ago, and it is punting time again for the Tigers. Zills to kick for the fifth time tonight. Richards is the deep man for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Richard says run away from it, and boy, that short kick takes an Alabama bounce and goes out of bounds after only 27 yards just across the 40. Well, coming up after this game, residents in college game night, Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herbstreet with a full wrap-up of Rivalry Weekend in college football. And that's followed at 11 Eastern by Sports Center. The latest on the NBA lockout, a preview of tomorrow's NFL action, plus all the hockey scores and the highlights that you can handle. John Alexander finds an opening. 10, 15. It is 17 yards on the running play. Ryan Taylor will make the tackle. And all of a sudden, Alabama looks as though that they are facing a tired Auburn defense. Yeah, and this has been the difference maker all evening is Sean Alexander. Just the outside zone play gets some, some nice blocking out of his offensive line, makes a few cuts in the secondary, and picks up the first down. Jason McDonald, number 70, with a nice block. Alexander tonight, 84 yards on 21 rushes, three receptions for 59 yards, two rushing touchdowns, and one receiving touchdown. That one of 43 yards. Alexander again weaves his way up the middle. And inside the 40, Brad Ware will make the tackle. And Ron, I'll tell you the other thing. We've talked about the players and the feel for them, but also feel for the assistant coaches for Auburn because they've been under a, a, a tough uh, situation. Pete Jenkins, defensive line coach, Jimbo Fisher, the offensive coordinator, the whole staff, Joe Witt, uh, including uh, Bill Oliver, because all the rumors that have started this week, a couple of coaches told me they couldn't even walk down to get water, and somebody would say, hey, do you hear the latest rumor? Tommy Tuberville's coming here, and so forth. So it's been a tough week for them to focus on this ball game. They did the best they could, and they did a nice job. They had a nice game plan. Their players played hard, but uh, it's a tough situation that you're playing against. Rose will make the tackle there on Alexander for a loss, but he stayed in bounds and now the clock before they snap it again will be under four minutes left in this one and the Crimson Tide with a 14 point lead. And, and you go right across the field what a year's difference makes. Mike DeBose last year was questioned uh, about the call leading the ball game. Uh, just an unfortunate uh, situation and uh, a lot of questions about the coaching staff and the decisions, but a year later has righted his program and is heading for a bowl game. Alexander breaks the tackle at the minor scrimmage, winds up with a gain of eight, maybe nine. Brad Ware is there to make the tackle on him, and that is good for the Alabama first down. So they move the chains, but most importantly, that clock will not be whistled in. There it goes, three minutes and 49, 348, and counting. And for this young guy right here, heck of an outing. He will always remember the first quarter. And then it's one of those dreams where you wish you just went on to sleep and stopped dreaming because the next three quarters have been a nightmare, so to speak. Alexander hit behind the line of scrimmage by Dorsey. Charles Dorsey, the senior out of Fort Lauderdale, makes the tackle. 
two children are going to graduate. Charles Dorsey will not be back. But a bunch of these other players for Auburn will be. And as I said in the second quarter, look out for the Auburn Tigers next year. This will be a solid football team. Tough opener, too. At Florida State. And I'll tell you, their schedule next year is yeah. not... Uh, not a thing that they come for. They better be good, what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Alexander almost brings it back to the original line of scrimmage. Leonardo Carson and Quentin Reese combining of the tackle there. Let's see, they have to go to Tennessee. They have to go to LSU. They get Florida at home. They go to Georgia. That's enough. Huh. 222 left in the ball game. Let's take a timeout. We'll be right back. 227 left in this 63rd edition of the Iron Bowl. 31-17. Alabama leading Auburn. But it did not look that way after the first four series because Auburn scored uh, three times. The first four times that they had the football. Alexander stayed on the field of play. Quentin Reese puts a stop on him. Well, Sean Alexander the Great has had a big night. Three touchdowns, Ron. And Ronnie Cottrell, who's an assistant coach with Alabama and has been at Florida State, said he's just like Ward Dunn to make a bad play into a great play, just like on this pass where he made some great individual moves to get in the end zone and untouched for the last touchdown. 59 yards, 59 receiving yards, three touchdowns. So quite an evening, and particularly on a guy that we have mentioned has been a marked man. Major penalty being stepped off against the Crimson Tide, and it was after the play was over, so it's fourth down. Pope trying to let a lot of time run off this clock. In fact, he walked up to yep. make sure the center could see his hands. And he wants a little more room to boom another one. Plus the fact they took about 22 more seconds off the clock. the deep man for the Tigers. Coming after him, but he gets it away. Good coverage kick. Very high, not real long, and is going to be caught at the 12 and a half yard line. Adrian Carston, what do you have for us? Right earlier in the game, uh, you and Coach were talking about John David Phillips and what a great influence he has been on Andrew Zhao. We talked about Ben Laird, the influence he has had on, uh, on Gabe last week. Well, here's John David, a senior captain. With the exception of the bowl game, he'll never participate, uh, perhaps, in another football game in his entire life. And what a lot of character. Class individual to get with Andrew after every series, help him out the best way he possibly can. Bittersweet moment for John David Phillips after a pretty darn good career. Well, you're right, Adrian. We echo that uh, as well. That's what you want in a football team right there. That picture says it all. Deep pass over the middle and incomplete. Clifton Robinson, the intended receiver. Another drop. Over the middle, Gabe Gross under pressure again. Gabe Gross told me, Ron, in three high school football games while he was a senior, he threw less than five passes in three games. He said this is just a, a new situation for him, reading three safeties and the pass offense he's learned this year. Gets that one away, and boy, he paid for it. That 
He fumbled it for a moment, then caught it in midair. Wagner was right there. Karsten Bailey, the intended receiver. Clock is running at 113, now 112. Third down. Wagner again with pressure on him. And he'll run it for the first down, and he gets out of bounds, picks up the first down, and stops the clock. Well, tonight's Visa players of the game are from Auburn. Devontre Carter, you see the numbers on him, 22 rushes, 102 yards. That's career high for Devontre Carter. And from Alabama, Sean Alexander, 158 all-purpose yards and three touchdowns. As part of their continuing effort to further the development of amateur athletics, Visa proud to donate $1,000 on behalf of these athletes to their school's general scholarship fund. Ron, and I'm putting honorable mention, Daniel Pope, the punter. Mm -hmm. That's Rusty Williams cuts it back across the 35, and he is going to take it out to the 43. Clint Wagner will make the stop, and they will stop the clock for a moment at 47 seconds to move the chains. goes through your mind right now when you're on the wrong side of this score this rivalry is when you go in the locker room you talk about the, we're not going to let this happen again we're going to start working right now lifting weights and in the off season and get ready for next year and get ready for for this ball game next year but the other 10 ball games in a bowl game 42 ticks left in this version of the iron bowl Gross delivers this one complete to Robinson. Right across the middle is tackled by Merritt. Bill Oliver led his football team in here tonight, Ron. They played well early in this ball game, but then Alabama just took the ball game over. Well, there's a timeout we're going to take it with him. 33 seconds left in the game. Alabama 31 to 17. We are live. That's uh, Pope and Quincy Jackson plotting and how they can. That's a big garbage can they got. That's not one of those small ones. A whole lot of wet there. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure Mike Mike Paul Knight. Mike Paul Knight. This is his first Iron Bowl victory. Gross is passed. This one to Carson Bailey and goes complete. Great career. Karsten Bailey's had here at Auburn. Well, throws Evan into the ground and stops the clock with 23 ticks left on it. They're even planning the time. They said with 15 seconds to go, we'll head up there. <laughs> Don't forget residents and game night coming up. It's next immediately following our ball game here as they will wrap up the day in college football in this rivalry weekend. And some very good and close games. As far as surprises, uh, I guess the biggest one, and maybe not really a surprise, but Arkansas over Mississippi State. And the Bulldogs coming away with a huge win. Through the hands of Gross. And that one may have been taken away. And that, that Moorhead took it away from him. So this was history. As far as scoring. Big buckets of water. Someone's going to drown in that one. <laughs> Celebration has started here at Legion Field for this gentleman. Will this be his last? Many suggest that it will be as the interim head coach, and he has suggested that if he is not moved up as the permanent head coach, that he would, in fact, think of retirement. John David Phillips will come in to take what should be the last snap of the ball game. The layup game is the call. Antoine Nolan on the sideline. And Ron Andrews out just to close out his night. He started slow. But he gained momentum and hit some big passes in this ball game. That 
should do it. Ten seconds down to nine and the crowd will count it off for you. history Alabama wins at 31 to 17 stay tuned for residents in game night coming up next and join us next Saturday at a special time noon Eastern as Virginia takes on Virginia Tech for Mike Godfrey to Adrian Karsten and our entire ESPN crew I'm Ron Franklin this has been a presentation of ESPN the worldwide leader in sports now here's Chris Fowler your host for college game night Chris